talk about their high school years. They speak of the friends they have made, the relationships they've built, the trips they took, and maybe that one teacher that they love or can't stand. While all those difficult things stay in my memories, the most memorable moments for me throughout my high school career are unique and special. One of those moments that stuck with me the most, I am proud to share with you today, as it makes me the person I am standing in front of you. So, just a little bit about me. Um, in order to appreciate the difference that my artifact has changed my life, um, it, it's important to know where I came from, my background. I was an only child raised in the middle of nowhere. Um, my nearest neighbor was a tree, so I didn't have internet or TV to just be playing video games or scrolling through YouTube, so I always had a book in my hand. When I realized that not everything I had or not everything that I wanted was within my reach, I learned that if, if I took a few steps in the right direction, that I could, re I could grab it and I could run with it. When I was little, like I said, all I did was read. No one could fill a book from my hands. And even as a small child, my family told me that I would be someone who could make a difference. The artifact I chose to present is one of the per most perfect examples I could think of to show how Foxcroft Academy and my four years of high school has sent me on that path. I was given an opportunity to do a research, to do research alongside a PhD candidate at the University of Maine, who I'm thankful to have here today with me, through a program called uh, Upward Bound. Okay. So my artifact that I'd like to share with you guys is a lung cancer research project. It's about how circadian disruption affects the growth of development of cancerous lung tumors. So these are a few pictures from my research. In the past two years, I've been collecting and analyzing uh, data and tracking the development of cancerous tumors, as shown here, in rats that have undergone stress of their circadian rhythms, similar to the stress that most shift workers undergo. Alongside my mentor, Walter McCulley, I have been able to work for two years on a project that's as near and dear to my heart. My grandfather passed away um, the day I was born, a few hours before, uh, due to lung cancer. So I've always had this piece of me that wanted to help. He wasn't able to survive uh, when he was diagnosed due to the lack of research. So the real reason why I wanted to make a difference was for him. Um, I could go on forever about this topic. I've done many presentations on it. But the real reason why I chose to share it was because it helped me become a better person. <coughs> So the mission statements at this school that I just decided that it would really fit under is integrative and informed thinker. My artifact allowed me to become an integrative and informed thinker because it took so much research across so many disciplines and I've learned so much from the people I was around. I also learned about computer programs, counting methods alongside the painstaking of counting each individual tumor by itself like they did the old school way. Um, and in order to understand the results that I, was, that I found, both myself and my mentor had to use many different components of the data, and it was something that was confusing, but, very, but also very thrilling. But why? You may ask, why? Why did I do this, or why did it help me? And my simplest answer I can give is my education. The truth behind the reason why I chose this artifact to present to you is because I'm proud of this accomplishment. I wouldn't take it back for the world. It is something that has made me a better academic and a stronger person through across so many other disciplines. Alongside the experiences, this piece of work has developed a lot more than I ever thought possible. It has made me a better student. It has opened my eyes to how versatile that all subjects can be to my education. I've learned so much more than science during this journey. From hands-on skills to self-help and care, I've learned how to help myself while achieving my own, gene, own dreams. So I've become an informed and active global citizen through my experiences throughout high school and the experiences outside the walls of Foxcroft Academy. From trips with my dad since I was little, to awards in school, from college classes, to tantrums thrown by small children. 
Um, I've learned that situations have so many different reasons and outcomes based upon the world around them. Life is more than just the four walls of high school. It's more than just a few people that you grew up with. Um, life is about reaching your full potential and allowing yourself to complete any goal set before you. Life is following the path you make for yourself, wherever that may take you. And I'm happy to say that my life has taken me on a path that I will never forget. So for my future plans, I'm hoping to continue my research, or at least my drive to do research, whether it's the same thing I've been doing or new topics. As I continue to strive in the medical world, I wanna to continue to help those around me, whether by research or by physical care, and I'll be attending Hudson University in the fall as an undergraduate in nursing with a focus on pediatric and emergency, reps, uh, emergency medicine. Now just to graduate. <laughs> Very well. Done. Maddie, can I ask, um, how did you get started doing this? Like, how did you, did you hear about it from something from here? Or did you? I can't remember. I remember you coming up and pres presenting about it one time at yeah. assembly. Um, so, I wanted to do this medical program um, that was down in New York or down in South Carolina. And I realized that because I'm low income, I can't afford a $4,000 program mm -hmm. per week in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and I was talking to Mr. Pratt about it, and he told me about this program that he had been a part of called Upward Bound. Mm -hmm. He got me in touch with the director, Becky Colonino, and uh, set me up with an interview, expedited the whole application process because I was already late on that. And then, um, they were like, okay, so by the way, this is six weeks in the summer and you're at the UMA campus the entire time. I was like, oh, okay, great, wonderful. <laughs> and when I got there, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew that I wanted to go into the medical field. And I was in the math science program. They had everything from data sciences to veterinary sciences, um, physics, engineering. And um, a couple of the guidance counselors were like, we have the perfect placement for you. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was really skeptic at first. And um, after the first week, when we started our um, actual uh, projects, they uh, introduced me to Walter. And it was a hassle at first, that first summer, because everything failed. <laughs> all at once, we lost all of our data after four weeks and had to redo everything in two. Um, but it was really like, if Mr. Pratt hadn't said, hey, I have a different solution for you, I wouldn't have been able to do this. And I wouldn't have been able to um, have two journals that are in the main library that have my name and my writing in it. Or, or have the opportunity to present and help research um, that could go into a medical journal or could go into a science journal um, and go beyond just me. That's great. There we go. Okay. So, my name is Kaylin, obviously. Um, I know I'm not like super familiar with a lot of you guys. I didn't get the familiar teachers that I knew, but that's okay. So, more about me. I my, most of my time is taken up by sports. Um, in the fall, I play field hockey. In the bas in the winter, I play basketball. And then in the spring, I play softball and I throw for the outdoor track team. So that's like the consumption of my time most days. But when I'm not doing that, that's a picture of me and Kenzie and Lauren. Um, so I like to work, I'm a lifeguard at the Y, and I work at the public beach in the summer, it's also through the Y, but I do that a lot of time there. And I do various babysitting jobs and things like that. Uh, I love watching professional sports, sports and college sports. Um, I do a lot of hunting and fishing with my dad and my brothers and the rest of my family. Um, I love, love coaching youth sports camps um, in the summer and like during the off season I find the travel team or whatever that's happening and I always try to volunteer my time there. And just like other teenagers like hanging out with my friends. That's why the pictures of Kenzie and Lauren. So the thing I'm doing my presentation on is my volunteer work I do at Mayo. So I do this every other day. So on B days I go there and I work eight to ten thirty in the morning, which isn't a ton of time, but it's the I have first and second period study halls on B days. So I would just end up sitting there half doing my work, half being distracted, watching Netflix doing things. So I found this to be a much much better use of my time. So I do everything from preloading patient charts. So they had like an old electronic system. So if you were in like the OB department and they needed something else that happened in the 
completely separate part department, there was no connection between their systems, so they got like a whole new electronic system where I can just look up whoever's name and I can see everything about them. So I have to take people's charts, their old charts, and transfer it to the new one, which isn't just like as simple as copying and pasting. I, it's every last detail to when your appointment was, your entire medical history. So I do that. I send confidential forms to other hospitals. So if you had like an ER visit where you broke your leg and a few months down the road you went to an orthopedic surgeon, the orthopedic surgeon would request your ER visit chart and I have to send those to them. Um, patient interaction, long-term physical therapy people, I go in and interact with them. I worked with the executive assistant today and I helped her uh, scan paperwork that needs to be put electronically. They're just old paper files that they want to get rid of so they're putting it electronically. So I'm connecting this to the responsible and involved citizen standard. So the performance indicator is participates positively in the community and decides creative solutions to meet human wants and needs. So this helps connect me with the community around me. Um, the wants and needs of the community, they needed more people to do these little jobs that honestly, they're not that huge of a deal, but they need to be done eventually. So the, I found that, like I said, to be a much better use of my time than sitting in study hall, half doing my work, half not doing it, being distracted. And the second performance indicator was demonstrates ethical behavior and the moral courage to sustain it. So these patient charts that I have, it's your entire medical history. So if I mess up and I put that you have hypertension when you don't, or if you, I mess up your, I have to enter all your allergies, all your immunizations. If I mess that up, that's kind of a big deal that I can't really mess up. So it's a huge responsibility to take all of this information and be able to transfer it. And it all, the third one will demonstrate, demonstrates awareness of personal and community health and wellness. So I, I'll explain this in a minute, but this helps me pursue my career because it opens up like a hospital setting to me so I can see what happens in a hospital on a daily basis, I can go to the med search floor, I can be in the executive assistance office, I can be in any different place in the hospital. So it's definitely opened my eyes to what I want to do more in life. So how you have helped. So this is a picture of me and my coach. His name is Rupert Lewis. He is the field hockey and women's lacrosse coach at St. Joe's where I'll be attending next fall. So Fox Draft has provided me with the resources I need, but also has encouraged me to always step out of my comfort zone and not only help myself, but help the others around me. So I found something, I could have stayed in study hall or I could have done multiple things, but those two study halls I could be sleeping in, which would be very nice. But I took that time to not only help grow myself, but help grow the others around me. So I will be going to college in the fall for medical biology with a pre-physician assistant track, and I'll be playing field hockey there. And not only has the school helped provide me with all the resources and the work ethic behind it that I need, but I believe that some, the, my volunteer work at the hospital has also helped with making sure that I have to now manage my time where I don't have you know, two hours and 10 minutes in the morning to finish my homework anymore. I have to make sure I do it at night. So both of those things have definitely helped me. Beginning of my I was born in Dover Foxcroft at the one and only Mayo Regional Hospital. And I've lived here ever since. I think you guys lived in like Lincoln and stuff, but I've always been here. Uh, I was homeschooled since kindergarten until freshman year where I joined the Pony Herd. And I think that has definitely taught me to be a self-directed and self-determined lifelong learner. Um, I started violin when I was nine and I joined FA String Ensemble in seventh grade, I think, yeah and I've been with them ever since. And I played soccer in middle school and joined the tennis team my freshman year, and I also like to read and write and all that stuff. So, like I mentioned before, homeschooling was probably the beginning of the whole writing, self-determined, kind of like pushing myself to write more and more, which kind of ties into what I'm talking about today, which is a book that I'm publishing at the, probably the end of this month. I have like proof copies here, so it's like, in case you didn't believe me. <laughs> uh, with homeschooling, it was really up to me, like I was, my mom made the lesson plans and had all the books ready, but it was up to me of what time I wanted to finish, how fast, I even ended up, I skipped like third grade, just because I was pushing myself to really do the most that I could. And the length of my school days were up to me, so sometimes I got done at like noon, 
and I could go outside, swim in the pool, and I also started writing. I wrote like short stories and fairy tales, and that kind of took me to creative writing my junior year, where I really started to concentrate in what I loved. Miss Rugley had just like a short, I don't know, like section on poetry, but I was really hooked. So the summer of my juniors, no, summer of my senior year, I wrote over 100 poems and took them back as the beginning of my manuscript and probably deleted all of those poems off of my manuscript and wrote 40 poems a month until I had this, I guess. Um, we edited these poems for hours and hours and if that's not like just like determined to like meet your end goal then I don't know what is because it was tedious and I would hand in edits after edits and have just more feedback and I think the most rewarding thing was Miss Rubley finally putting a check mark next to that poem that I finally got where it was supposed to be and then came publishing which was a completely <laughs> new platform for me I had I had never even thought of publishing. I didn't even want to. Miss Rubley kind of told me, you know, you have a lot here, you have a lot to offer, you should just do it, like take that leap of faith. So I did. It took a lot of convincing, my mom and Miss Rubley. But uh, yeah, me and Ada Abdakasheva, we were in the independent study that we took together. And we started using, it's called KDP, it's Amazon's publishing platform. They do all the like printing and everything and it was really convenient but I'm also not that great with technology so it was a lot of learning and unlearning and then learning again but it was really rewarding the entire time so here it is I looking at it now it kind of seems insignificant to like how much time I put in now it's just like in this little book but it's taught me a lot about what you can achieve with your own capabilities and your own determination. And really setting yourself on the path that you wanna go down. Because there's so much you can do, there's so many opportunities, and especially at FA, like having an independent study and being able to publish a book at the school, the opportunities are endless. And I think what it really taught me was you just need to like seize those opportunities and really not be afraid to just be determined to do something. And not only will I graduate a self-published author, but I will graduate. <laughs> and I think I will definitely take this with me everywhere I go. I'm planning on attending University of Maine in the fall, and uh, I'm gonna be doing the Army ROTC program, which is a surprise, but it'll be good, I think. And I'm gonna study English and literature, and I wanna teach someday. And not only do I want to teach like English and everything that goes with that, but I really want to teach determ like determ I keep saying that, but determination. Like you can achieve anything. Just like use your resources, be willing to learn and be willing to kind of adjust your abilities and adapt to your what's given to you and and take those opportunities. Don't kind of just kind of don't just sit in the corner. Just kind of put yourself out there. It's terrifying, but it's really rewarding. And I want to travel. That's part of the army thing. I'm hoping they'll send me somewhere abroad. But I definitely think I'm going to be publishing more and more and really keep writing. It's a really, really special thing to me. And this is the epilogue, epilogue preface for my book. It's right in here. And it it's kind of sums up everything that I said. I, I, I read a lot of C.S. Lewis when I was little. And that's all. Any questions? I was wondering. <laughs> um, thank you for coming to my presentation today. And um, this is my senior year and my senior for poem presentation. Um, I'm going to talk about for donation standard for creative and um, practical um, problem solver. And I choose this because um, I thought I can 
like I am I, I am like a person for being an artist and I want to be like creative artist not copying other people's artwork I want to be unique artist and uh, be more um, better thinking for my future uh, I just brought my artifact um, for college portfolio so there's like a 15, like total 15 artworks for, from my college, and this is the first one. Uh, yeah, and this is the title is Hidden Pictures that I think uh, I use for three um, three different music that has love story and um, traveling and for dreams. Um, I put some like different puzzle pieces on it and make it really scramble. But it's actually meaningful a lot for me because I listen a lot of music and um, I usually like to listen to music while I'm working on my artworks. Um, this is my separate piece that has, um, I define everything that I can do it. It was actually a piece of like a, a jean jacket that has it, and I cut them and make up pieces, everything. Um, and she's my sister actually. <laughs> um, I made a design like this for my. Um, this was actually my um, the new school home home challenging, just trying to challenge for myself and. It was actually a good challenge because I want to be a fashion designer. Um, this is the third one. I was trying to use the music about the costumes because I want to be a costume designer. Then I used every different characters in the uh, paper cup and I paint them and try to choose like a, it's like a, a stage. So they are, they are all main characters, and I'm trying to um, put on my body and wearing like a, I'm trying to be a stage costume designer and trying to show that. And this one is my, um, it's all the body, um, body parts. And I was, I made this artwork because I was playing a soccer last year, and I heard a lot of my back, and I was trying to make it like funny stories at there. So like I'm trying to explain that like every body parts are connected, and like whenever I got hurt from somewhere, like I can figure out like oh I got hurt, because it's everything connected. Um, this one is also good um, artwork that I tried it, and I made a uh, little pieces of different natural um, mediums and um, the story, the back story was also, I want to make a like a bandage for a back when, when it hurts from the soccer. And I was thinking like, every time they have like a bandage, but it's not really pretty enough. But I want to put pretty together. So I was trying to do that. Then um, this was the work after it. Um, this one is, Thing is love obsession because I have a dog in my back home and um, I feel like every time I'm just keeping my dog in the house, not like taking it out of my office, I feel so bad about it. So I try to look how about like the pet is looking down for the like human and humans are inside of the cage and trying to make it like really unique idea. Um, it was actually really a lot of artwork because I I literally bought the uh, bird case and tried to um, design everything, and it was really big artwork. Um, this is a funny story. Um, it's a lonely, crazy chicken over there. Um, that the pen that I'm holding is crazy chicken, and um, I was like lonely, and like everyone are dating, so I was like, you know, like I want to make like this artwork something funny and like art, something like unique artwork. And then this was my result. 
um, I only start Paleolithic and I did like last winter. Um, this is my interest. Like I like body parts and I like tattoo, like something really unique artwork and it was my result. It was pretty um, easy but it also like kind of more interested on it so I, I know why should I put it on it. Um, this one was um, 3D insect. Like I was not trying to put people are like insect, but like the meaning background over there is like people, like the insect try to go high up to the light every time because it's warm enough for them. And people are also like they want to go high and high for the upper classes and better successful life. And I was thinking like, oh maybe like what if I put people as a bird, like the insect, then um, this was not my artwork. So I cannot find any like pictures that people are trying to study hard or um, trying to do their successfulness life. So I just put like um, sport people who actually try hard for their um, future and dreams. Um, this is my um, my other artwork that I had. Um, I usually go to Subway a lot when I was back home, and every time when I looked at it, like Subway is like under the ground, so there's like a part that has a lighting part and really darkness part, and I put really different part, but they have all different meaning on it because the light brightest part is people who can really happy and moment, moment but the dark part can show also like darkest part in the somebody's feeling on it. Um, the title is My Life is um, the, um, My Life is in Danger and um, it is really um, like really bad story because I feel like people in this ages they're trying to be really trying to um, kill their self and actually the chair was like meaning to people who go up to the chair and use the ropes around the chair and they try to like kill hang out their people but also like some like toolboxes and like um, my can also help like to stop their suicide commitment and then um, or you can ask the people behind and like try to make them not be in danger in like that. Um, this is also really negative artwork but I, I really like this artwork because um, I saw once I was sewing like a computer with a mouse then the mouse like falling down from the um, desk and I, I kind of figured out I was like well, what if the mouth is being a uh, people and using the rope and they get to a side and but also the computer like the people around the, the person who's trying to commit the suicide can also help uh, help the person to uh, commit the suicide. It was really deep but pretty good artwork. This is myself. <laughs> um, I drew this because I take a lot of like selfies to people like to show in my social media. But then also I thought that if like a lot of different people can see my social media and look myself as really different. Like it's different people, like people can see like I'm ugly or like I can be, oh she's, she looks really different than last year or something. So but like, it's different effect if the people who want they look at me and I'm just confused about that because I, I know I myself is not like that, how people think I guess, but I like try to figure out who I am. I. <laughs> um, this is my style tip. I have a double life style because in my home I literally use my um, cell phone and like trying to be chill from outside of my stress and from outside I'm trying to show people that like how I am enjoying my life right now. And um, this is to how this to look different my personality probably.
Um, this is the last piece that I work on it. Um, I use the actual gin to glue them and make it really hard. Then I cut it and I use like a saw blade and um, I put a lot of effort on it. Uh, it takes like two weeks on it. Then, but I actually got really good artwork with it. So this is all my presentation. But uh, I, I think this all artwork we're gonna give me really successful college life later if I get accepted. And um, also like create, being a creative person can be also like successful later. So I hope everything really works well. <laughs> Thank you. I live in Corinth, which is like half an hour away from here, you probably know that. And I have lived there my whole life, and I only come to FA because my dad works here, which I'm very lucky. And I like doing a lot of things outside in Maine. I really enjoy that I live in Maine, and I get to do a variety of things. There's hiking and canoeing that I can do in the summer, but then I can also ski here in the winter without ever having to leave the state. Um, I have played... I've been a two-season cheerleader all four years at FA, and then I decided to also play soccer in the fall this year. I'm involved in student council and math team and key club, and I um, volunteer outside of that at Mail, and then with my mom at Sotomocha during their extended school year program for especially needs students. And I want to continue my studies, whichever college I end up going to, and majoring in biomedical engineering. This is a version of the picture that I used in my portfolio. The actual one is at the end of it. And this is a group picture of our junior counselors at Main Youth Leadership last year. This was my second year going to Main Youth Leadership. I went my sophomore year as an ambassador from FA and then I returned as a counselor the following year. And this is the standard that I chose to put it underneath. And when I read these, I kind of interpreted them slightly differently or not slightly differently, but in my own way compared to what they say. The first one, for example, I took as bringing something to the community that you live in and bringing something that is not just a need that you're feeling for yourself, but a need that you're feeling for other people. The second one I took as not only taking responsible responsibility for your decisions, but being willing to take on the responsibility of making decisions and being willing to be that person that when things don't go well, they look, they have to look to that person and ask why it didn't go well. Um, the third one I took as, kind of, I thought of it as when I'm working at Mayo. I learn a lot of things when you get into a position of leadership or a position such as working in a hospital that you aren't able to share with other people. Um, this one down here, I thought a lot about when we're at Maine Youth Leadership, there's a lot of kids who are coming there from a lot of different backgrounds, which is surprising for some people who live in Maine because we tend to be one stereotypical background a lot of the time. We're not a highly diverse state, but I'm able to see that there. Um, this one, I thought a lot about just knowledge knowledge that I've gained from being at Maine Youth Leadership with all the different speakers that come. And then the final one I thought about knowledge again, but not just of the world, but of what I am in right now, this moment and the community that I live in and what they need. These are some of the pictures that I enjoy from Maine Youth Leadership. This picture here is with my friend Luke, who I met on the first service trip that I did my ambassador year at Maine Youth Leadership. We went to Partners for World Health, Health, which is a organization that collects not expired hospital supplies, but supplies that they are not able to use anymore because of the strict regulations that hospitals in the United States have. Once they've set something out on a table, whether they open it or use it or not, they're not able to put it back. But all of those supplies are still very usable. And so they gather these supplies and send them out to third world countries that have a great need for these supplies. This picture in the upper right corner is from a hike that we did last August after my junior counselor year. 
and we went to um, the yurts in southern Maine and even though it was a hike kind of just to get everybody back together and to continue Maine Youth Leadership, we still did community service on that hike. We, the whole way up, they made sure that we picked up every piece of trash that we saw. And then this bottom right corner is with one of our speakers, Senator Angus King, who comes every year to Maine Youth Leadership. And I chose that picture because it kind of leads back to the civil awareness and all of that, that we're getting exposed to all of these great people when we go there. We get to talk to lawyers, we get to talk to senators, and it puts you in a position to be able to make decisions about what you want to do in the future. Um, and why I chose Maine Youth Leadership today to talk about is all the lessons that I've learned from it. We do something called the game of life, where you're put into somebody else's shoes that you would never actually be in in your own life. They give you an identity that only the people who are running the game know what it is, and they can look at your tag and tell what your identity is, but you don't actually know it yourself. So you may be somebody who is transgender, you may be somebody who doesn't speak English well, and you get to see the harsh realities of some ways that they may be treated in those situations. Um, again, the speakers. We get to, we have a speaker who comes every year who has a similar um, disorder as to what Stephen Hawking had. And so we get to learn a lot from him. His name is Bill Picard. He's a comedian in Maine. He talks a lot about the struggles that he faced in his own education. And it makes us see maybe what we will never experience that in our education, but it makes us understand the human differences that are around us. Um, the service project, again, I talked about the first year I went to Partnership for World Health. The second year I went to a home for the blind. And all we did was we walked with them. They wanted to go to a dance that was in their town, but they're not able to walk there themselves a lot of the times. So we walked with them, we took them, we danced with them, and it wasn't a lot for us to do. It just took a couple hours out of our day, but for them, that's a service that we're providing and it makes them able to do things that they would normally would not be able to. And again, the JC training and the trips that we take outside of it, they still involve community service in it. It's not just fun for us, it's something that we're doing for other people as well. And Mile for me gave me a lot of confidence that I went on to do other things with it. And some of the things that I've done is I ran for student council president. I am not very comfortable public speaking. Right now I'm very warm. <laughs> And I would not like to stand up in front of 400 people all the time, but I had to do that at Mile. They force you into those situations so that you get comfortable with that. And the picture over here is my first day as student council president this year on freshman day. And Mr. Shorey asked me to talk to them about involvement and putting yourself out there and doing these things that you normally might not. I also went on an outward bound trip. The top and bottom pictures are from that. And it was two weeks in the woods with people that you've never met before, which can be incredibly uncomfortable, but it's something that I was willing to do because I had been thrown into those groups with kids that I didn't know and expected to be a leader of them. So why couldn't I do it if I wasn't even expected to be the leader all of the time, if you could take turns with it. Um, I was a cheering captain in my junior year, and a lot of the things that I used, I learned at mile, kind of, the um, senior facilitators that are placed with each group at Maya, along with the junior counselors, talk to us a lot about when people come to you with a problem, you return the problem to them instead of fixing it for them. And the picture over here is, I was talking to my stud group before we went on at regionals this year, and we are not a winning team in any way. We have never made it to states, even though we've gotten very close. And what I was saying to them then was, it doesn't matter, because my flyer had never been in a competition before. She was a senior, but this was her first year as a competition cheerleader. And she was incredibly nervous that if we messed up, that it would all be her fault that we didn't get to go to states. But I told her that essentially each person's putting out what they have, and she felt much more comfortable after that. Um, and it helped me, going to Maya helped me better understand other people's perspectives. Like Ureli, who is my flyer, 
I have always been very comfortable going out and performing as a cheerleader, but that's not always something that other people are comfortable with. And it's also made me a better public speaker because it put me in the position to do that multiple times. Um, under this standard, why I chose it to put it here was it really, it made me want to do community service on my own, not just through Key Club and through Student Council. It made me want to go volunteer at Mayo every other day for two hours during the school year. It made me want to do more with ESY. It made me want to bring partnerships for World Health to Mayo Hospital and kind of expand that on my own. Um, it taught me a lot of leadership skills just through the conversations that I've had with the mentors that I had at Mile, whether it's the senior facilitators or Tracy, who is the JC Wrangler because she's in charge of all of us. And it's less about leading them by telling them what to do and more leading them by pulling out people and asking them what they want to do. And um, they taught me a lot about the decisions that you're making. And when the final night a mile is kind of just a time for kids to share with you, the kids that you have in your group. And a lot of them share things that are incredibly personal to them. And you have to kind of decide what you report to counselors and what you don't report to counselors because they're not standing there with you. And some of them are heavy things and you have to decide whether you are going to break that trust with that kid that you have gained for that week by going and telling somebody. But it's a decision that you have to make even if maybe they don't like it as much afterwards because it's for their safety. And um, Mania of Leadership is definitely something that I will carry with me. It's a very unique experience. No other states in the United States would really be able to do this because of their size and their volume of people. They're able to take one sophomore from every high school in the state, and sometimes two sophomores from high schools, and take them and put them all on one campus and get them to all interact with each other, which is super cool because you get to meet people from towns that you've never even heard of a lot of the time. And it's an incredible experience and I chose to highlight it during my portfolio because it's something that I think more people should get to learn about. Not because it's the most valuable thing, certainly all of the things in my portfolio I felt were valuable obviously. And it wasn't the standout one to me per se, but I thought it was something that I wanted to tell other people. It's something that I wanted to share about. And Maya will go with me as I go on, as I think about biomedical engineering, I'm thinking about what it can do for other people as opposed to what it can do for me. It's always been an interest of mine, but it's more about the work that I'll be able to do with a degree like that. I want to continue volunteer work as well. I continue to volunteer at the hospital, and that's something that I'm interested in doing all through my college career as well. And it's also kind of, it sparked in me a dedication to make a change for others in the way that when I think about new projects for student council and all of that, I'm thinking about people that we can help outside of just our small school community. I'm thinking about bringing the Placer project back again and selling bracelets for the weavers in Nicaragua and Guatemala. I'm thinking about a new project that somebody brought to us where we can do selling recycled bracelets um, and all of the donations go to cleaning waterways. And it's not something that helps our school and helps me personally, but it helps somebody out there. And as I continue on, Maine Youth Leadership really taught me to push myself and to push other people. They put you out there and have you introduce the speakers so that you get exposed to talking in front of people. And that's something that I think will really help me as I go forward in college and help other people that I get to come in contact with. Any questions? Um, when you mentioned bio, biomedical engineering with a cause, do you have any uh, more focused idea of how you want to serve your community with that degree? Um, I thought a lot about what I wanted to do when I got out of that because there's a large scope of options with a degree like that and I've thought a lot about gene research and medical trials and how interesting those are to me 
but I've also thought about the simple things that I can do. When you go to a hospital and you check in, how are these machines working? How are patients like receive, that are receiving these kinds of transplants feeling that they're working for them? And it's about not just making progress in the ways that I want to, but making sure that things are upkept within that scope. Um, yeah, about me. So this is me, uh, as you can see, this is my aunt, my mom, my aunt's boyfriend, that's me. That's my dad, and that's my dog. And I was born in the town called Arvinek. It's like somewhere around here, but at the age of like 12, I moved, I moved to Poznan, it's right there. And um, for high school, I moved to Warsaw, which is right here, this is where I am at right now. But yeah, this is where I live. Um, yeah, and from when I was a kid, I, I was just kind of an outcast. And yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, my mom and my dad divorced and stuff like that. My dad lives in London. Um, I live with my mom, and hopefully soon enough I will be living at home. This is my artifact. I know that this is just a picture of a, of a page from a notebook, but it has a way greater, greater meaning, meaning at least to me. Um, so yeah, um, it's calculating cost. It's calculating cost of my dream business, business, and I'm gonna get what this business is in a second. But um, that connects to even for thinking. Well. Um, Back in high school in Poland, I had a, um, what's it called, a, um, economics class. And they taught me a couple of uh, things, how to like, open a business, uh, like, how to make a business plan, how everything works in, in just economics and stuff. So I, I did use this knowledge calculate how much money I need to open up the business um, and uh, yeah. and yeah th this is how it is well into my future too just yeah um, open up. and the business is an arcade in Poland I open an arcade because well I guess everyone here knows that I'm pretty uh, that I like just get, play games and um, and the thing is, in Poland, we didn't have a case because Poland was kind of too poor. People were too poor, and even if they, they weren't, they didn't see a, a case as a, like, a good and stable, like, stable source of money. That's why we didn't have those back in the day. Now they're instead because five in America. Oh, this is actually good. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no. But it doesn't pop in there. My dust is broken. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that's why we didn't have a case in Poland. And I think a case, are like, because now, like, the whole thing about people who are playing games and just they're in the room. Outside, interact with people, and I do kind of agree because this is a sign of being addicted to games. And yeah, uh, I think I love it. <laughs> games some fun to play. But a case actually did make that people want to get out of their rooms, with, meet people, and just interact with them. And I think this is a great way to connect people and even like families and stuff because you just son, daughter, whatever, just like games with them. Uh, yeah. And the second thing why, why I want to open an arcade in Paul because of the FGC. And FGC stands for Fighting Game Community. And it's, uh, it's not like really big in America and Asia, but in Poland it also not, it, it's almost non-existent. But the thing I just 
want the whole community. It's welcoming for everyone. I mean, and there's just so much amazing stories and relationships in this community. And I want to be really, really badly to be part of it and like be someone important. I want to just introduce people um, in Poland to this type of entertainment, esport, whatever you want to call it. And like, it's gonna move. Yeah, just, yeah, like, <laughs> okay, now I get it. So, um, like, the, the, the whole thing, like, you can see people exciting there. There's no voice, so you can really hear them screaming, but, <laughs> yeah, and just, like, you can, you probably wonder why is this guy, like, angry or whatever. But what happened? He just won the biggest tournament fighting game. The biggest fighting game tournament ever in the world. And he was trying to win it for four years, and he finally did it. That's why he's crying and screaming. And you know, this is the guy who lost. <laughs> <laughs> he's just crying. Yeah. Um, and this is like a whole thing. You can see people all, all the people are just there for the game to connect to them. That's why I want to change the way people view games. It's, not, it's been that divides people because they are sitting in their rooms and doing nothing. I want to change the view of it that people would see as a thing that connects people. Um, and yeah, this is what I do. This is how I want to do it. And yeah, this artifact. It was in Polish, so I'm going to go back and translate it for you. <laughs> um, This thing is this place to uh, just a flat where I can just put everything and um, and it costs around around um, five thousand dollars. So I'm doing that like dollars and five um, the arcades like, uh, because this is not going to be only arcade. Like the modern consoles do, because like look at the kids nowadays just like, oh, this game looks bad. And I don't play. <laughs> so yeah, and so of course consoles and games and furniture like couches and stuff like that. And of course I would like to have some food there. Uh, it's not going to be a bar, but just and the whole thing that I calculated was. Um, let me do the math real fast. Uh, it's going to be somewhere around $25,000 and probably even more. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is my current objective in life. Soccer is very team oriented. Softball lets me use my head, and um, track helps me be better. Fox Rock Academy has given me the opportunity to fulfill each one of these mission standards through either my classes or my extracurricular activities. And the one that I feel like I have fulfilled the most is becoming a clear and effective community. I believe I have fulfilled this mission during my time on the FA Girls Soccer Team. Being on a team is all about communication among teammates in order to accomplish a common goal. My artifact is my captain band that I received my senior year of this past soccer season. 
and this band is worn by captains to show teammates, coaches, and the other team that you're a leader and that you can be trusted to handle problems on the field as they arise. The connection to this mission standard is that this band represents leadership and the ability to communicate with my team members. And as a captain, the most important task is to listen to your teammates. And after I listen to their concerns, I would take them into consideration and openly solve the problem. Communicate with more than words. Part of being a good communicator is relying on more than words to explain and teach. On the field, I would often use body language to let my teammates know where I wanted them or who I wanted them to guard. And if they came up to me at practice and wanted to improve their kick or their footwork, I would either teach them by using my words or um, my body to demonstrate. And this helped me realize that not everybody learns the same and that in order to be a good communicator, you need to take into consideration who you're communicating with. And soccer has taught me to lead, how to follow direction, and how to work with others. Next year, I will be attending UMO, and I am going in undeclared, but I am accepted into the Explore program, where I will be looking at different majors to see what's a good fit. And I think being a good communicator will help me in any field that I choose. Do you guys have any questions? Okay, so I'm Sydney, and this is Nancy and Coco. Um, I was born in Hyannis, Massachusetts, and I moved here with both my parents when I was three. And we've lived in the town of Harvey, Maine, ever since. My mom's been a figure skating coach as long as I've ever known, so I was lucky enough to be on a synchronized skating team with a lot of other girls in doing competitions. Um, I started skating when I was about 15 months old, and the competitive skating up until 2015 when I came to FA and wanted to try some sports. Um, in middle school at Harmony, I did basketball cheering, and that's kind of where my love for cheering started. And um, but before my freshman year, I started a cattle business with fellow friends who have a dairy farm, and we call it HQ Replacements. And we raise cows from when they're like baby babies. And then once they're about like two years old, we breed them and then sell them to farmers because that's like the hardest part of farming that they don't really want to do. And I'm really passionate about animals and that's what I want to do in life. <laughs> um, during high school, I was on the cheering comp the competition cheering team and the football cheering team all four years of being here. And I was lucky enough to be captain my senior year along with Kenzie. Um, I'm part of the yearbook class, so we put together the yearbook for everybody. And we add the horse back right now, so I'll see it. The standard I chose was self-directed and lifelong learner. I chose for my artifact for the standard was being accepted to college, and I got accepted to the University of Maine Augusta at Bangor. Um, I was accepted about three weeks after I applied, and I applied for the veterinary technology program so that I can become a vet tech and maybe down the road, if I really like it, um, try veterinary, like as a veterinary. Um, I'm going to be starting classes this fall, and I'm actually already like taking an online class right now, and that's an intro to veterinary technology class. Um, I think the FA has helped me set the goals and where I want to be in life and given me like the proper education to push me farther and to prepare me for college. And they always say that no matter what, you can always accomplish anything as long as you try and push your hardest. Um, Fox Draft Academy has helped me become a lifelong learner through all of my four years of high school here and has helped me become a better person and grow as a person and go through what's going to be thrown at me through life.
you are, you do realize that veterinary school is expensive. Do mom and dad know this? Yeah, I think yeah. they do. <laughs> Good. Well, that's, a, that's a long go. Yeah. That's great. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Will you live in Bangalore or will you commute? I'm going to commute my first year yeah. and see how that works out yeah. and then go from there. But it's closer to go to Bangalore than it oh, is yeah. to actually Augusta. Oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah. Yeah. Do they have the ones at uh, Bangalore at the campus? Not the Bangalore one. They the Augusta one they do. So you have to be in the car, then? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know or have you talked to anybody who's experienced in the vet tech program at the Augusta Bank organization? I haven't, but I've talked to a lot of people there, and there was actually, well, actually, yeah, I have, because when I toured there, there was a student, but that's about it. Well, just so you know, my friend from high school went there, because she, her parents owned a dairy farm, and um, so she also really loved animals and whatnot. And um, she had an extremely good experience, and they were going to cancel that program because they didn't think that there were enough people involved in it. And her and a bunch of other students like petitioned and tried to keep it because otherwise you have to go out of state. Yeah. So um, I think you're going to have a good, a good experience with it. Or at least I hope you do, but yeah. I think you should. Thank you. Um, did any of the classes or um, things at FA that you did kind of play a role in your decision to become a vet tech? I think, this might sound weird, but like some of the classes like when I took biology and like learning about the different types of things with like animals, environment, and how they affect each other mm -hmm. was really interesting to me and I like enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And then just being around animals is something I really love. Mm -hmm. And being, like the greenhouse class doesn't like have to do with animals, but like being well, outdoors and yeah. Okay, algebra two. Yeah, algebra two. Yeah. That's in my portfolio. <laughs> is there, is there yeah, one? one of your tests. <laughs> Might be coming back with some more math. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's a fact. <laughs> that's your struggle. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my senior portfolio presentation. Uh, my name is Bo Hydro. And first of all, I want to tell you guys a little bit more about myself. Uh, my name is Botai, or well, most people call me Jerry. And I'm from Henan, Zhengzhou, China, and I'm 18 years old. Most people don't know where's, like, what place I'm actually from in China. But this part, the less dense area, is the, the place where I uh, province in China. I grew up with 98 million people in my state. Yeah. And this is the photo of me when I was, uh, I'm not sure how old I was. Aww. I was like about three years old. Yeah. <laughs> Is that your sister? No, it was like my childhood best friend. Uh. Yeah. yeah, haven't seen her in a long time. <laughs> yeah, so main topic today, the mission standard I choose is a responsible and involved citizen. Uh, for me personally, my understanding for this standard is a person who taking more control, taking more responsible for themselves, then they can have the time to uh, care about the people around them, or the society, the, just everything around them. And uh, my artifact is uh, my four years time when I'm studying in FA. I think from where I started and where I end up now, i am become a totally different person. And I think this time I should be showed how, like, uh, why, I'm, uh, why I think I follow, uh, made, made up this standard. Uh, this other photo, uh, I was... <laughs> uh, when I was uh, 15 years old, 2015, with my friends, I was a very different person back then. I never studied. Yeah, it was a really fun year for me, not for my teachers. Though. Like, yeah, it was a disaster. <laughs> Every day after school, I don't even open my school bag. It took me a year to figure out what is possible. Like, it just like I just like uh, just imagine like a 15 years old move to a new country with money. Like I just I just don't know what to do. Then, but my grades suffer horribly. My GPA was like uh, around 2.7 at the end of my freshman year, and uh, I started to realize I, I don't think I don't want my high school end up, end up like this because there's a very big possibility I'm not gonna be able to graduate if I keep doing what I did during my freshman year. So I started to change myself. I started to start to look around the start to look at people around me and see what actually means a student and uh, what expectation from FA have. Uh, Wax station are them, and uh, I should try my best to to meet them. Yeah. And uh, I met a lot of struggles, and uh, I think I 
change myself a little bit, and uh, four years later, yeah, see, that's my AP scores. Mm -hmm. I got a five out of four. Nice yeah. job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is a photo of me during the flag ceremony. I, I think it doesn't, maybe it doesn't matter for other people that much, but for me personally, it was a kind of big deal because uh, I, I was really proud I can represent my country. With that red flag, I, I, feel, I just feel really proud. And I think uh, I start to take more responsibility on myself, like what kind of person I want to be, what kind of student I want to be, and I start making actions and decisions. And uh, more, uh, around the next to the academic life, uh, I, I'm, oh, this photo is I took with my friend in dorm. As a matter of fact, I'm the proctor in dorm, which means I got a single room. But uh, more importantly, is that I need to care about other people. I need to take care of my whole floor as a group. Once in a while, I need to knock on their door, ask them, do they need anything? Do they, how they doing in school? Or like, uh, how's it going with your roommates? Uh, I can never imagine I can qualify enough for this job when I was a freshman, but after two years, I think I did not that. But still, like, uh, I, I, and this also shows I make, make friends with a lot of international students. As you can see, it's a lot of <laughs> yeah. and, um, just being in FA dorm as a whole community is just a very fun experience and helped me grow up a lot. And this is a photo of me taking uh, in a soccer team. I have played soccer for four years. I never try a sport, school sport ever, because it's just simply not an option in China. And I started playing soccer since freshman until now. Uh, during freshman year, the coach doesn't even allow me to sit on the bench. Uh, <laughs> Just let me be the water boy all the time. <laughs> allow me to sit on the bench. And uh, after four years, is that uh, Ayla actually make me the varsity player, which I don't think is a qualified, but I just think it's uh, quite an honor. You know, I, I think um, I just really en enjoy the experience with the team. You know? Oh, sorry, uh, you missed the English book. Yeah, I don't fight. Right. <laughs> and so um, I think uh, the, this photo just show how much I grew uh, grew up. Uh, next to the academic life, with my friends, with the community I live in. And I think that more importantly, uh, giving back to society. This is a photo of me with uh, Mr. Mr. Kothery. Uh, he's my own parents during the NHS orientation this year. I, I feel really honored to be part of NHS, and I think NHS uh, give me more opportunity, opportunity to help people in the local community who they need help. For example, I went to the church to help them uh, uh, cook the food in the, in the church over there. I cleaned up like 50 dishes that I never cleaned up cleaned dishes in my life before. But it, it was, a, it was a something up there. And uh, also, uh, this is a photo of me with my friend Ahmed during the kick club. We are cleaning the graveyard for people who doesn't, doesn't care about their ancestors. Yeah, and uh, I've been doing kick club for four years now. Uh, this year, yeah, and uh, I think I did like a 101 community service hour, which is, uh, uh, I, ne I never heard of the idea of community service before I came to here. And after learning and seeing like introduction of Key Club, I start to believe and understand when people like us have time to donate and the energy to donate to people who need, it's actually a wonderful thing. I think it allocates the resource more efficiently. Allocated efficiently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, for my future plan, I mean, obviously I will go to college. And uh, for, co for my college life, the more, most important thing I want to know is just, I want to know the, the, the life, a, a, like a, a life outside of Maine. I mean, I live in Maine for four years now, and I don't really know what America is like uh, other than these places. And also, I think I'm only 18 years old, uh, so I don't really have anything to worry about right now. I want to travel around, and uh, I want to go to Europe or Africa somewhere. I just want to go see and experience, because I don't think I have any pressure, and I think this time of the life is, uh, is really fun. I don't have a job, car, like rent to pay, so I think just go has, have as much fun as I can. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's my favorite part. Yeah. And I think, thank you for watching. Any questions? Where are you looking at to go to school? For now, I'm looking at Rutgers. Oh, you're looking at Rutgers? Yeah, Rutgers. You realize that's in Jersey? I don't know. Okay. Nobody likes Jersey. Good. Good. It's close to New York. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Study in what? Yeah. Study in, I think I'm going to study in marketing. Mathematics? Yeah. <laughs> marketing. <laughs> yeah, marketing. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Exactly. Maybe economics. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think like also economics. Good. So yeah. hard to get it. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Yeah. Oh, you have applications in other places too? What? You have applications in some other places too? Right? Yeah, I do, but I'll reject it. Uh, I'm still waiting for that one or two. I, I think it's... Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm sad. Is it the right or something? Yeah. Ever, ever been to New Zealand? No? Yes. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Sure. It's interesting. It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Portfolio presentation. Uh, so, a bit about me. So, those of you who don't know me, but both of you, all of you do. Uh, I was born here in Dorf Hochstraff, Maine, at Hospital Rankin Town. I was born May 24, 2001. I'm 17 years old. Uh, I lived in Farmington for most of my childhood life. Uh, I was there until about first grade, and then I moved here and uh, attended San Mocha. I'm an avid artist and technology guru, which uh, I like taking apart consoles, uh, modding software, that kind of thing. Uh, comics and games are considered my quote-unquote thing, so when I draw, I draw comics, I read a lot of comics, uh, I play a lot of games, I know how to mod games. Uh, and then for schooling in the future, I'm going to UMF uh, in the fall of 2019. The standard that I chose to uh, uh, put my portfolio on is a self-directed and lifelong learner who understands the importance of embracing and nurturing a growth mindset. The uh, uh, self-directed lifelong learner, uh, excuse me, uh, the indicators were recognizes the need for information and locates the and evaluates resources, applies knowledge to set goals and make informed decisions, applies knowledge in new contexts, demonstrates initiative and independence, demonstrates flexibility, including the ability to learn, unlearn, and relearn, and demonstrates reliability and concern for quality. There was one more uh, standard indicator that wouldn't really fit for my presentation, but all of these indicators directly relate to my art. I have been uh, drawing my entire life. Uh, recently, I've begun uh, taking commissions, which means uh, people will pay me money to create a piece of artwork that they want. Uh, and they like my style or something, they message me on social media. Uh, I'm completely self-taught. Uh, I was not taught here at FA. Uh, I did take Art 1 here, but uh, at that point I was already ahead of what uh, was taught in Art 1. Uh, my work is usually of pop culture and or comic characters. My favorite things to do are Spider-Man, Spawn, Marvel kind of stuff. And then here I have Raphael from uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that I drew uh, in 2017. Here's a little uh, comparison image of how I progressed through the years. Uh, this is four years before I did come to FA, however. Uh, I was just trying to find a good comparison of the characters through progress. I drew that when I was 10, uh, and that was in uh, January of 2011. This was in December of 2017, uh, and I drew this as a Christmas present for my stepmother who lives out in Las Vegas. Uh, these are more examples of my work. Here is uh, Ron Perlman's Hellboy. Uh, I drew this on eight and a half by twelve black paper with a white Prismacolor pencil, uh, and at that time I was really focusing on realistic portraits uh, and trying to get lighting down and whatnot. Here's a more comic-like uh, drawing. This is digital, uh, so I can do both traditional and digital media. And then here's a commission that I was messaged about on the social media known as Reddit. It's of a uh, Bioshock, a, a popular video game, uh, and I charged around $100, and I was able to uh, make money with my art, and this is one of my first commissions that I was able to do. And how this relates to my future is, uh, when I go to UMF, I am majoring in illustration, and my dream job is to become a comic book penciler. Uh, I'm gonna be continuing my independent studies, because at the moment I'm currently studying uh, Bern Hogarth's uh, Dynamic Anatomy. Uh, it's a book that was published in the 1950s. Uh, near halfway through schooling, I'm going to send submissions to Marvel, Image, uh, DC, and uh, Dark Horse. Uh, those are four large comic companies. And I know that 
when I first start sending in submissions, I'm going to get denied and they're going to tell me things I need to improve, which I'm going to take to heart, especially because that's really what I want to do. And I'll take that constructive criticism to heart. Uh, and then once I'm in college, a good way to make money is by selling your art as a tattoo artist, uh, or not tattoo artist, but selling your art as tattoo flash art. Uh, I have a friend in Connecticut who said that he'd buy my art off of me and he'd use that as tattoo art. Uh, and then, as I said, uh, hopefully I'm going to be getting a job at either Marvel or one of com a comic company for becoming a comic book penciler. And all of this, I think, really well fits into a self-directed lifelong learner. This is definitely what I want to be doing for the rest of my life. Any questions, things that need? So, this is a little bit about me. I was born in Manchester, New Hampshire. I enjoyed sports and outdoors and classic rock music. Um, my mission statement I chose to present today is self-directed and lifelong learner. I'll be talking about where my passion came from, how it helped me through the years, and how I chose to pursue this subject. This is how I plan to pursue the subject in the future and learn as much as I can about it. So, my artifact that I decided to use today was a ball peen hammer that I created at Tri County. You guys can do what you like. I'd love to. Nice and early. Um, I produced this from nothing but a blank of brown stock and about 30 hours of labor. It's the most intricate and difficult project I completed at Tri-County, which makes me even more proud of how it turned out. It demonstrates every skill I learned my first year at Tech, with lathe operations such as turning, facing, internal and external threads, tapping, or tapering, knurling, and turning between centers, the vertical mill operations, face milling, side milling, drilling, and tapping. Um, going through, uh, this is where it all came from. Going through middle school and growing up, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. My freshman year, Foster Craft Academy said to take a welding course. I immediately began to enjoy and develop a, uh, a want to learn as much as I could about the subject. In the following three semesters, I took every welding course available here. My hopes were to acquire enough knowledge and skill in the subject to be able to do my own side projects and jobs on my own. It was here, Mr. Sylvester's Welding Shop, where my love for metalwork was born. Um, it's helped me through the years. Uh, um, just wanting to go to school every day, gave me something to look forward to, um, like boring classes. And it gave me the reason to want to learn more and pursue something. It helped me uh, spark creativity and work ethic. Uh, in pursuing this, uh, I heard about a course at tri County Tech Center coming up to my junior year, uh, metals manufacturing. As soon as I heard about the opportunity, I filled out an application and hoped I got in. When I got accepted and began doing the following, and began going the following school year, I expected more of a welding program than machining, but it was the exact opposite. Eager to learn more, I didn't question it and jumped headfirst into the curriculum. Soon after beginning, I fell in love with machining. It taught me patience, attention to detail, work ethic, creative problem solving. I knew that this was a career I wanted to pursue and took the same course the following year to learn more advanced content in the machining field. My plans in the future on the subject? I've spent a lot of time in the machine shop the last two years, but I know there's still so much more to learn, and I'm excited to do just that. I plan on uh, I plan and I'm already in the process of enlisting in the main Army National Guard as a 91 Echo, which is a machinist and fabricator. I will be taught as much as the Army can teach me over a 19 week period. After I turn home from my schooling and training, I will pursue an education in CNC machining from Northern Maine Community College in Prescott. Beyond that, I will learn as much as I can from coworkers in the field or anyone I meet with extensive training in the field. Questions, comments? Hello, hi. Welcome to my uh, senior portfolio. <laughs> Here it says the autobiography of an international student in his time in the US. That is completely wrong. <laughs> this is only part of it. So, included here, uh, there will be a tiny self introduction, you know, my standard of what I think is going to be best as my student portfolio. Um, a little bit of my experience in artifacts because that's what everybody would like to hear, I'm assuming. Uh, and a bit of self-reflection before we end. Well, uh, self-introduction. My name is Kang Vu. Most people would refer to me as Kevin. Or Kevin Vu. I stated here. I was born October 17th, 2001 in Ho Chi Minh City in the beautiful country of Vietnam. This is a very nice picture of it. It doesn't usually look like this. <laughs> 
Personality-wise, I like to think I'm very outgoing and you know positive. Uh, many people have given me like good reviews. <laughs> good reviews, yes. Many people being my mother. Uh, well, my friends say otherwise. They, they. But being uh, thinking that I'm very you know, positive and outgoing, I like to be involved in many things, which you know leads to a great segue of my standard, which is being a responsible and involved, and involved citizen. Nice, right? Yeah, this is a nice picture. I look cute. Uh, <laughs> here, uh, this is at the robotics meet. Uh, and here, I'm, uh, this is with my two colleagues, Mr. Vincent Vo and Tong Nguyen. That's the tongue. Uh, I spend the entire day at this robotics meet being an MC. And it was a great time. It was, uh, I spent a great time. It was a great community service, but I enjoyed doing it. It was a lot of fun. And I get to meet a lot of people. In background, I helped Yusuf with like, you know, running, doing a bit of errands, and like doing a little bit of background work with him. You know, secret, secret. <laughs> and, and what I think it means to be a responsible and involved citizen. Um, or rather, how the school defines it, is <laughs> participates in the positively in the community, you know, hence the community service and being a proctor in the dorms. Accepts responsibility for personal decisions, which you know I'm, I have to admit I made a lot of mistakes. And being a responsible person, I will take my responsibility. Demonstrates ethical behavior, uh, which I like to think that can like help me prosper in the future if I do good and like stick to one task and finish it ethically. Understands and respects diversity. Everybody knows I'm Asian. <laughs> I gotta respect that diversity, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> one of my upcoming artifacts would be a health essay. Interesting, because why would a health essay be shown, showing that I'm responsible and involved? Obviously, um, I submitted it on time, I would be responsible. But this essay had a particular circumstance to it. Mr. Ayala made a mistake grading it, and as, as I was, I also made a mistake in the reflection of his mistake. I lost control of my temper. I said things I shouldn't have said. And it was a regrettable experience. But being to show that I was responsible, I took actions upon myself, came and at the end of the day, I came to him, I, had, I said sorry. And I showed him like evidence where he did wrong rather than like losing my control and temper and learn from that mistake so that I don't want to repeat that ever again. Being in part of the community also means that I do community service. Um, with community service comes like activities in school. One of the most memorable activities I did this year or rather like a tiny ceremony was the flag ceremony. <laughs> See what I did there? Uh, this is me with Daida and with Najla. We had like a blast doing this. It was although it was like short lived, we uh, we had fun. You know, we get to tell people about our our country. We want to get other people involved into you know the international aspect of you know Foxtrot Academy. Being here really really helps and like it offers us a chance at like interacting with different people from different countries. Um, other than that, there is also community service. <laughs> Welcome Obviously. to America. Welcome to America, right? <laughs> community service. Here, we're just scrubbing graves. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a blast doing it, and we also gave back to the community. It was a positive, fun time for everyone, and we enjoyed it all. Uh, <laughs> well, with this, with my standard, I think, would help me greatly in my future prospects and intentions. 
especially in going to college, I think being responsible and involved in what you do would greatly improve the way college sees you as a person. They, for the yet, it um, improves me academically and it also like helps me improve myself as a person, showing that mistakes can be made and people can be changed. That's the end. Thank you for your time. <laughs> All right, so for those of you, all one of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Bridget Casey. I am 17 years old. I've lived in Dover Foxcroft my whole life. Uh, born in Bangor. Uh, I've lived in the house that I'm currently in for the entirety of my life. Uh, and if you couldn't tell by the pictures I selected, I love music a lot. Uh, it's been a part of my life forever. Uh, my dad plays guitar and sings. My mom used to play flute once in a blue moon. Um, but even if it wasn't them playing it, uh, we always had music playing in the house, whatever new music one of them had found at the times. And it was always a big part of my childhood. Even in my education, uh, music was always one of my favorite courses. Uh, Fantasia, my favorite Disney film of all times. We must have watched it at least three or four times throughout the course of my elementary school career. And I loved it every time. Uh, and as I've gotten older, my appreciation for music has matured with me. Uh, I've learned to appreciate the way the chords and the notes work together to evoke emotions and make feelings in the ways that the lyrics work with the music to tell a story. And along with that, my other passion is the theater. Um, theater has helped me make some of the best friends that I currently have, and it's helped strengthen my relationships with the ones that I already did have. It allows you to become someone else. You get to analyze a character, and you get to show that character and who they are to the audience and make them feel things, which, since I enjoy that, is probably why I'm going into the field that I'm going into. Uh, I hope to study psychology. Top choice is Mount Holyoke, currently. I uh, hope to be getting my doctorate, perhaps, and a possible minor in theater because we're not letting it go that soon. So this is my artifact. This is the cast picture from the production of Nonsense that I was in at Center Theater uh, between my sophomore and junior year, the summer in between there. Uh, some context, I've been acting, well I've been doing theater since seventh grade. Uh, I started out as a techie, I was a sound tech. I edited audio, I played the music, got the audio going, made sure everything was running well. And in my eighth grade year, uh, I went to auditions to sign up to be a tech, and Derek Carroll said, get on stage, so I did. And I loved it, so I acted for the rest of that year. Freshman year, I took a break, because uh, I was a scared freshman and I didn't know what was going on. And also they did Shrek the Musical that year, and they did a good job, and I loved them. But it was Shrek the Musical. So I didn't do any acting that year. Sophomore year, I got back into it. I did musical, I did one act, three acts, and took intro to theater. So at the end of that year, uh, I saw on Facebook, I believe, uh, that Center Theater was auditioning roles for a musical. And my dear friend, Hannah Poland, who's right here, said that she would be auditioning for it. So I thought, I might as well too. I like doing this, why not? And Actual theater is a lot different than school theater. You actually have to kind of know what you're doing. Which was okay, because from past experiences, I did kind of know what I was doing. I have been doing music since I was in fifth grade, uh, theater since seventh grade, as I told you, and I did a little bit of dance when I was just a wee small thing, which was good, because we had a very short turnaround. Uh, six to seven weeks for a show, which is not a lot of time when you have to do full music, full choreo, full blocking, full everything. But because I had the know-how, I was able to apply that knowledge and those skills to learning the music faster and making it easier for us to get it turning around. We got the music learned three weeks or so, very fast, and the choreo went just as well. 
But as much as my previous life impacted this, it also impacted me a lot. I would say that this is probably one of the most impactful things in my entire high school career. Going into it, I was a sophomore. You know, sophomores are. Uh, I wasn't too sure of myself, not very confident, and it kind of showed at the beginning. Uh, I was having problems projecting and singing out loud because I wasn't sure of my voice. So one day at rehearsal, we were playing, uh, singing with the band, and I kind of did like a, a joking, belting thing, you know, the kind of razzle-dazzle thing. Deb Fortier, our music director, stopped me dead and said, why haven't you been doing that since the beginning? I said, because I didn't think it sounded good. And she said, it does, keep doing it. The entire show, this entire show, was basically just Derek Bushman, who was the director, and Deb Fortier, getting me to actually have confidence in myself. And now, I do! <laughs> um, like, the uh, three of the things in my portfolio would Probably not have been possible if I hadn't done this, just because I didn't have the confidence to do it. Now I can do public speaking, I act, I sing, I make a fool of myself and I don't care. And it's great. <laughs> uh, the other thing was, this was a couple weeks after our first round of shows, I got a letter in the mail. It was a little thank you note uh, from one of the ladies at our church. And I don't remember the full thing, because it was kind of lengthy. But the one thing that really stuck out to me was basically along the lines of, in these uh, troubling times in our nation, it's good to see something good, that people are doing good things. And I was like, wow, I can actually make a difference, even by putting on a silly musical about nuns who don't know how to put on a musical, which is exactly what it's about, by the way. It's hilarious. And that got me thinking, if I can make an impact for people just by doing this, imagine what I could do with like a full medical degree or a full psychology degree. I could change people's lives. And even if it's just one person who enjoys a silly joke, that's all that really matters. So, any questions? Welcome everyone. My name is Spencer Ireland. And this is my senior portfolio presentation. So a little bit about myself. That is my senior picture on the left. I'm 18 years old. I'm from Maine. I've lived here my entire life. I was born at Eastern Maine Medical Center in Bangor. Um, yes, you read that correctly. I'm a resident of both Dover, Foxcroft, and Charleston. My parents got divorced in 2007. And so my dad lives in Charleston, mom lives in Dover. Um, I'm a member of various clubs at Foxcroft Academy. Uh, oh boy. NHS, I'm captain on the math team. Uh, unified basketball, track, soccer manager, the list goes on and on. Part-time key club. Uh, and I'm also a part-time employee at Will Shop and Save. So usually 14 hours a week is typical, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Stock shelves, do whatever will last. And I also, I love spending time with the people that have uh, given up time to allow me to be in their lives. So more about me, because I didn't think that one page covered enough. Um, <laughs> this is more academic based. Uh, I'm a student with 100 Hours of community service, probably half of that coming from the key club, the other half coming from, uh, I did a lot at my mom's work for the Charlotte White Center, and uh, five Beta Kappa recipient. Uh, my junior year, this year I was the MPA Principal Award winner. Um, this past summer I did, I went to Boys State, that was quite an adventure. Um, also, bronze medalist on the National Spanish Exam, which I'm very proud of because I plan to uh, minor in Spanish at my time at Boston University, where I was accepted early decision on December 14th. Um, it was very exciting. I'm excited to be part of the class of 2023.
So the best piece of work that I chose was my, I took an early college course through the University of Maine this past year and through their academy program. Um, I took it as a senior year at FA and it was very interesting. Um, I just wanted to, you know, kind of challenge myself. As a senior this year, I really only needed an English and uh, I needed a physics credit so I could graduate. I had everything else taken care of. But I was like, well, I kind of want to do something more just to show, you know, I got to take that next step to get my foot in the door for college. So that's what I decided to do. It was AST 109 with Dr. Batuski. Uh, the standard that I'm connecting this to is self-directed and lifelong learner. Um, for one, I love astronomy, so that would just be my preference anyways. But since I'm going to uh, study it, I thought it would be a good idea to get some early access to that type of education, especially at the college level. The University of Maine is a very good college. And so um, I took this course on top of my course load, which I mentioned before. Was, it's quite rigorous. I take two APs, AP Lit and AP Physics. And during the semester I had this class, I was also taking two economics classes. So I kind of had a full course, and I did all of this in my free time. Um, I connected this to self-directed and lifelong learner because, as you all know, not every high school student takes college classes while they're in high school, especially on top of a load, a course load that I have. So. I just thought that, that was kind of a good connection to that standard. And so for my future plans, I plan to uh, get my degree from Boston University. Hopefully over time I can get my PhD in astronomy. That's my ultimate goal. I would uh, like to also study abroad for a semester. That's where my Spanish would come in, which is a great aspect of what I've learned here at Foxcroft Academy with Ms. Reyes Henderson, she's a very good teacher. Um, and I'd like to work, I don't know quite where, that's why there's a picture of both NASA and SpaceX. I don't know where I wanna work, that's part of the reason why I wanna to go to Boston University. They have a lot of good internship opportunities. So, but I do know that I wanna be an observational astronomer, so like using telescopes, stuff like that. And yeah. I'm very excited, and if it wasn't for my time here at Foxcroft Academy, which helped me become um, an informed and active citizen, which I mean I'll be going to Boston, which I think displays perfectly going to Boston to study astronomy. That just shows right there how I just put in the time and effort and with the help of the faculty here at Foxcroft Academy. How I'm just, I plan on being a very uh, central part of brighter things. So now, Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed. Are there any questions?